Welcome to the Hermetic Astrology Podcast. I'm Gary Caton in Waynesville, North Carolina. You can find me on the web at dreamastrologer.com. And I'm here with special guests today, Shireen Shostak, who's been on the show before, several times, I think. Um, you can find her at shireenvismaya.com. Welcome back to the show, Shireen. It's great to have you back. It's great to be back. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Just in time for Mercury retrograde in Scorpio. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So we had Mercury retrograde in both of the other water signs already. And this is the third one. And um, I remember the Pisces one felt like it was kind of hard for people. It was like the first one in a new, in a new element. I think that's part of it. Also, you know, Mercury's not supposed to be all that comfortable in Pisces and stuff. Um, and then the cancer one, I don't know. It didn't seem like as big a deal for a lot of people. But it seems like a lot of people are already feeling this one, that Mercury and Scorpio is dredging up stuff. And, um, you know, so it's, you know, it's, it's already doing its work. Uh, <laughs> I think it goes right in. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but you know, it's what I love about Scorpios. My my sister, you're born on the same day as my sister. I think I told you that, right? I love that. So you're my honorary, you're my little sister. She's my big sister. Um, and you're my little sister. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I grew up with Scorpios. My father's a Scorpio, my sister. And uh, I've had, I, you know, I have good friends that are Scorpios. I had Sam Reynolds on the uh, program earlier this year, and he's got some Scorpio vibe, you know, going on there. Um, yeah, and I does. think if I had to, you know, because both, you know, and I'm an Aries, obviously, most people know that. <laughs> but I think that, um, you know, both signs being ruled by Mars, there is a similarity. In, and I would say that, like, I don't even know how I would say it correctly, but I would just say that like Scorpios are just more, either more private Mars or more um, internalized Mars, or, you know, they're, they're, they're very similar to Aries. It's just, Aries is just out there, you know, fire sign. It's just, out there. whereas, you know, the water signs, they're a little more private. They're a little more, but, you know, I mean, yeah, one of the things that I really enjoy about working with you, we've worked together several times on your Project 40, is that, yeah, you're, I mean, you're willing to get down in the trenches, in the muck, and, and you know, share difficult um, emotions and show people that you're struggling just like them. And it's really, just really authentic, and I love that because... I feel like it gives people permission to just be messy and to not, you know, to not feel like they have to be some Pollyanna version of themselves or anything. And I, those are just some of the things that I love about Scorpio. It's like, you know, it's, just, it's real. It's authentic. <clears throat> I love that too. I love that. And it's, I agree with what you say. Like, I think Aries and Scorpio are both determined to be authentic and yeah. true to who they are regardless of who they have to fight to get there. <laughs> <laughs> to be true to themselves. <laughs> Aries is more like fight club fight. Scorpio is more like go in the hole and dang. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's so cute because I, I have a student, a little nine-year-old Aries student, terrible uh, student. Seriously? Yeah. Dance yeah. student? With a Scorpio moon. So she's like the best of both worlds. A dance student or astrology? No, no, a tarot, a tarot and astrology. She wow. wanted to learn at nine years old. She oh my God, Shereen, what a astrology. gift. Isn't that's that amazing. Gift? Yeah. Because that's when I started, actually, believe it or not. Same age, exact same age. No kidding. Yep. That's Far when I got astrology. I had the Linda Goodman Sun Sign book. Uh, so, she yeah. loves that book. She wants me to read it to her all the time. And she loves <laughs> it. And that's how she's learning, too. That's so sweet. Wow, that's adorable. That's almost like having a cool aunt who's right. like, you know, into, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's I really get to see the Aries Scorpio in one little being, like how it works, because she's got that like fascination with death as a Scorpio moon child. Little goth also, girl. Like, she likes to fight. Like she's so cute. She loves it. She cracks up whenever I read anything about Aries wanting to punch people out. She thinks it's hilarious. Her fight. <laughs> <is> like, yes. <laughs> 
She's like, I can't stand whiny people. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, she's an Aries, all right. <laughs> she's amazing. That's funny. Yeah. So yeah, you know, you have the Mars rulership here. And, and one of the things that I think a lot of people may not realize about Scorpio, it's the only one of the um, feminine signs where there's not an exaltation. No, no planet is exalted in Scorpio, and it's the only one of the water and earth signs that don't have that. I had never realized that. We don't, it's true, nothing's exalted in our sign. It's we're already kind of exalted. curious. Yeah, it's like, we're <laughs> either we're already exalted or, <laughs> yeah, but we're it, already in detriment. It, it, it makes it feel like, I don't know, it makes it feel like a little more foreboding or a little more tough or a little more difficult. It's like, oh man, Scorpio, there's no, it's harder maybe to find the light side. There definitely is a light side because I went through and I was like, I was looking, I was trying to, you know, consciously pick out some, you know, the, of the di difficult side and the positive side. There definitely is a light side, but I think, I don't know, maybe it's a little harder because without that exaltation, it's not as, as obvious, you know, I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting. I had never thought about that, but, and Mercury certainly is not, um, you know, Mercury and Mars are enemies, so it's not, I don't think. Yeah, in Vedic astrology, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, well, you know, Mercury is willing to, like, you know, get what he needs through cleverness, and um, he's, he's not, in fact, you know, probably the last thing he's going to do is, you know, a fight, although, you know, there's one notable exception where he was the slayer of um, Argus, so yeah. Argifantes, you know, the slayer of Argus, Zeus sent him to um, get rid of this hundred-eyed giant that was guarding his girlfriend. <laughs> yes. And he well, put I him feel... to sleep and chopped his head off. So he's not <laughs> incapable, but unlikely to go that route. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I feel he wants to be more flexible and able to move, not, you know, feeling that intense, dense, concentrated you know, as some Geminis have said, they don't like to feel backed into a corner. So I think with this, you know, Mercury and Scorpio is such like a detective, fixated, concentrated, like let's go into the depths right now. And so if we think of mercurial energy, wanting to kind of be more um, fluid and flexible and like fleet footed and just, you know, able to just escape yeah. situation, Scorpio is going to be more like, nope. We're going to sit and research and <laughs> we're going to interrogate, you know, we're going to investigate. And yeah, you it, must. it probably feels a little like this Mercury. I mean, he can go into the underworld though. I mean, I, on the other hand, I was thinking about the psycho pump version and how he's on some level, he's very comfortable. And I think, I mean, often people that have, I mean, I'm obviously biased because I was born with the Mercury in Scorpio. Mm. Um, but we, you know, we love to go deep. We love to do research. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more comfortable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And like you say, he is the, the one of the Olympians that can go to Olympus and to Hades. Mm -hmm. Right. And that ability to to navigate the into Hades is, you know, quite remarkable because you know, not everyone's equipped with that. Not, you know, for a lot of people spend a lot of energy repressing the the dark stuff right because they don't want to they don't they don't want to um you know sort of they, there's a fear i don't know that maybe that it will poison their their you know their their normal life or that it will um that it will somehow like you know undermine their ability to you know so uh, no 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 we're going to keep that at arm's length we don't talk about that we don't you know what I'm saying? There's a tremendous yeah. amount of, and the thing there. of the thing of it is, is that when you actually go there, oftentimes if you've been repressing it, you're forced to go there, right? When you actually go there, there's a liberation that occurs because you no longer have to spend that energy repressing it or holding it back. It's like, oh, it's just this, um, and it reminds me sort of of. Um, 
like when you're at a funeral or something like that, right? And, mm -hmm. and you know, on, on the way there, you're sort of, you know, you're tense and you're anxious and you're like, oh man, you know, I mean, you know, nobody wants to talk about death or to, you know, but once you get there and you see, oh my God, it's just people who love each other, just, you know, remembering their friend or their loved one. And, oh yeah, it's just this, you know? There's that feeling for me anyways, it's like the thought of it is always worse than the actual being there. Actually going into it. Well, and yeah. Scorpio does have the ability to bring darkness to light. That's the real yeah. uh, modus operandi really of Scorpio is we go, we don't want to just get stuck in the dark. You know, we're going there to uncover what's been yeah what's been relegated to the shadows right and there's there's um there's gold down there there's uh there's riches right in 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 greek mythology you know the underworld oh, was a place right. of riches and and right the, so that so yeah there's like this energy that gets that's been trapped because of an unwillingness to go down there. and then once that you're liberated twice liberated because there's this energy that's been used in repressing and there's this energy that's been trapped and unable to come into and and once that journey is taken there's a tremendous liberation often that comes from that um yeah i know and, and even though we were talking about the difficulty often between mercury's relationship to scorpio at the same time when i think about gemini and virgo they have it's in i i don't know this is maybe a little more esoteric what i'm kind of tuning into but they are also, I noticed Gemini and Virgo are also such natural psychologists and researchers and scholars in a way, like it comes into their being as well. So I do think, I, I mean, we always talk about the negative of Mercury being in Scorpio, but I mean, if we think about, especially for Virgo, their third house is Scorpio. Right. Yeah. So they, there is a way that they like to do that. Yeah, now for like Gemini... Gemini yeah, for Gemini, it is somewhat difficult because it would be it would be literally the eighth house, right? Sixth. Gemini. Oh, sixth, right. I'm sixth thinking the other way around. Different. For Scorpio, Gemini is yeah. the eighth house, right? Yeah, so it can be. But that's also, I look at it like that's why Scorpios love to do research because Geminis are eighth house. So we love to, we, the way we do our eighth house stuff. Interesting. Really you know, that's out. the discovery chart of Uranus. Oh yeah. Um, Scorpio rising, Uranus in the eighth house. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And it's, yeah. So there's a, there's a tremendous like um, sort of Scorpionic theme there that hmm. um, and, and, and technology, I mean, think about technology as your friend when it comes to research, you know, oh, yeah. I mean, sure. like Astro data bank. I love that tool oh. because when I was, yeah. when I was doing my book, both books, you know, I can sift through, you know, tens of thousands of charts to find examples of these various things to show people, like, here's a person that you've heard of who exhibits this energy, you know, and I think that's really helpful. I love that. And since Mercury has gone into Scorpio, I'm feeling myself, I just, all I want to do is totally geek out and just research and do all, like, I, I want to just get into all my books. <laughs> yeah. I, do. I just want to yeah. go deep into everything. I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I was I was out um, doing some photography last night, and uh, I, I was kind of surprised because I, I had been feeling pretty introverted and stuff. And I was like, oh, I want to get outside, and and because uh, it was going to be clear. And uh, and then I get out there and I get my camera set up and everything. And it's I was kind of thinking to myself, it's almost too clear. Like there's nothing else in the sky to give any sort of like texture or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know. It's, almost be nice if there was if there were a few clouds the next thing you know boom the clouds come in and it's like all blocked off <laughs> oh, no. careful what you wish for you know it's like typical mercury <laughs> and scorpio and I, I managed to see venus just for like literally one second peeked oh. out from behind the clouds oh yeah um, she's back just recently back in her um hesperus phase yeah she's in the evening star phase and mercury's there with her beautiful yeah. um, but I didn't get to see either one of them because well I mean I did I saw Venus but I didn't get to see Mercury at all because he was hiding behind the clouds so he there's this hide. in Scorpio he likes to hide yeah right <laughs> so, <laughs> he's feeling like you nah I'm just gonna hide behind the cloud and do my thing. that's why it's hard to get me to do video I'm getting better but <laughs> years. so I was like oh we gotta do video okay Mercury, <clears> 
where we like to hide, do it more from the behind the shadows. But the other thing that I think that, you know, that Mercury and Scorpio is good for, obviously, as you said, as a native, one of the things that, um, that you do is this sort of purposeful journey into the underworld of, of the, into psychology, you know, and the project 40 that you do. Um, yeah. and that, you know, that I've been a part of, I mean, yeah. it's amazing to me how simply dedicating a space for this endeavor, right. The sacred alchemical container, right. Mm -hmm. And then just showing up and, you know, as messy and as sort of, you know, um, I remember there are times where, you, you know, you'll be talking about these difficult emotions and stuff. And I'll be like, yeah, I understand what you're talking about, but I'm not necessarily there. And then the next day you'll be talking about something else. And it's like, oh my God, she nailed it. You know, that's exactly what I'm feeling. And I was trying to, I was trying to, you know, put words to it and, <laughs> and then boom, you know, you're just, uh, like, and it feels so good to have someone else like validate, you know, where you're at. And then it's almost like, you know, it's almost like, um, being lost in a maze or something. Once you realize, oh yes, that that's where I'm at right there. And from there I can figure out where to go and what to do. It's like being located or something. Ah, it's always, located. it's always tremendously like revealing for me. It's, it's difficult, like going through the, you know, when there's a time where you're like, yeah, not connecting or I feel lost or whatever. And then, but they, but I, but I know from working with you, there's always that time where it's like, bam, okay, here I am. Here we are. This is why I'm here. I mean, and, and I've had some amazing experiences, man, with the, that dream that I had, that Chironic dream that I had. Oh, I'll never forget that. that. At my Chiron return that was so powerful and, and that was during the mercury in aries yeah it was during mercury in aries and i thought you know that's where my mind was i was thinking about Merc because i was co-presenting with you yep and stuff the furthest thing from my mind was chiron and aries yeah and the next right. thing you know this dream comes through and it's like no 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 here you go <laughs> but you know yeah. i wouldn't have had that dream if i hadn't have dedicated myself to this sacred process of diving into the underworld you know what i'm saying that's right. And it's so true. We need that, those sacred spaces to go yeah. into the depths of that. And I'm so grateful for those Mercury journeys we've done because they've really helped me. And, you know, also I loved the, just backing up, I love the synchronicity of how I had just gotten your book in the mail. Yeah. And then I was like, it's a, like how the synchronicity already starts to kick in. And then yes. the Aries season, Mercury was in Aries. I was like, well, hello. <laughs> 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 40 days, but working with you on that 40 day journey also, I hadn't realized consciously how powerful Mercury is in terms of a, I was looking, but it's Venus. I was thinking for some reason it was Mercury and Saturn. No, it's Venus and Saturn, of course. Um, how powerful of a influence Mercury is in the whole process of the work that I was doing. You know, I mean, obviously it seems so obvious now that we say it because it's journaling. It's right. It's yeah, there's a lot of writing. yeah, there's a lot of technology involved and so yeah. forth. Yeah. But how he really allows what I'm noticing and what I have more respect for is how the retrogrades seem to show up just of course perfect timing to allow us to process whatever planetary period we just went through. Like Mercury will show up in the perfect sign, perfect place, perfect alignment, perfect angles to be like, okay, now I'm gonna help you process and distill this experience mm, right right so he's like the processor <clears throat> yeah yeah and it yeah it, it really is because you know you get three signs of one element then moves to the next sign. so within a period of about seven years mercury literally goes through all 12 houses in your chart um in seven years yeah within a period of about seven years goes mm -hmm. through all the houses in your chart and gives you that processing and that, yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, things get stirred up. But the beauty of it is that, you know, there's this um, opportunity to really work that stuff through so that it doesn't all, so that it doesn't all get crammed down into the underworld and, and repressed and like, you know, hidden and, and inaccessible. So it's kind of like a, an, um, 
I don't know if it, yeah, maybe it's like a uh, psychic recycler or something, you know, like it's constantly recycling the, the psychic contents to make sure that things don't get too, you know, the underworld doesn't get too full, you know. <laughs> That's right. Otherwise, it's like Jung said, it's like if you go fishing and then you take too many fish, you're going to sink the boat. <laughs> if you have a book on those unconscious contents, you got to work on them. Continue. Yeah. I love that. Boat. Yeah, I love that fish that he drew in the red book, that monster looking fish. And there's the solar bark, you know. Um, uh, what I, I just, what an artist, you know. Oh, incredible. Um, yeah, truly incredible. And so, one thing I was going to invite people to is that you're doing a Project 40 um, 2.0. Oh, yeah. The title is Envy. Yes. Which is a perfect um, Scorpio theme, right? Yes. You know. Um, and it's the rebirth because, you know, it's the, the rebirth of Project 40. It, it died because it had its right. 40. It did right. part one. We did 40 of them. So this is also a powerful rebirth. So it's whatever project. Oh, this is the first one. First one. Oh, wow. Awesome. Rebirth of project 40. I love it. I was sad when it died. I know. I like, no way, man, die. this can't be. <laughs> it had to die so it could come back better. That's Scorpio. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> Never yeah. really. There's no real death. It's just a period at the end of the sentence. And so that's going to start on October 23rd, right? First day of Scorpio. And, and those uh, things are already kicking in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that there's a, there's a, I think that social media feeds into that somewhat, you know, there's like this, people talk about like this curated self that gets projected, this persona, right? And in Jungian psychology, if I'm not mistaken, the persona and the shadow are very much interwoven. Like, you know, you have this persona, which is kind of like this curated self. It's like all the shiny stuff. Yeah, look at this. And, eh, well, you know, we'll stick this back here where no one sees it. Yeah. You know, and so um, I don't know. It's in, in, I think that envy is one of those things that, you know, um, if you have this, you know, curated self, people get the feeling of, oh, that person is like just that. And there's no darkness, there's no shadow or whatever. And then, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Naturally, well, it's like, oh, how could they be so perfect or whatever, <laughs> you know? No, it's true. And then let's think about this. Like, now what we have with social media is like anyone can become a celebrity, self curated, self made influencer, they call it, right? Or celebrity. Yeah. But if we look at celebrity culture, they are doing the same thing. They're trying to create an image it's the whole thing about curating an image like you say but then the, the one of the big shadows of course is envy because the public that so adores the celebrity cannot wait to find out all the dirt I mean this is what we have <laughs> fire right the people you supposedly like worship Jennifer Aniston but you can't wait to find out that you know her and Brad had, had broke up <laughs> you gotta know all about it whatever you know I mean just right it's like this love-hate relationship or something right it shows you how up on I know I was thinking to myself too I was like gosh I'm really dated <laughs> I know that's the last thing I remember because I have no idea who she's seeing now but or, or I know um, me neither I'm just trying to think or whatever you know Demi Moore like she this she's actually a really good person to talk about during this time because she had the release of her book and she's yes. a Mercury Scorpio she's a Scorpio, yes. she's a Scorpio extraordinaire didn't she, she do fun. something where she did like a nude thing or something? Yes. I mean, so, you know, she did, was very famous for that pregnant photo on Vanity Fair. No, I mean, Fair again, recently? Yes, ever, that's what I was going to say. And then 30, okay. the whole thing is it's like 30 year anniversary. Uh -huh. So she wanted to, they wanted her to do another one. And she said, only if you don't Photoshop it, which is still kind of hard to believe it's not Photoshopped. Looks, looks very Photoshopped. But she it's looks amazing. Totally not. I mean, she looks amazing. Yeah, she's a sparkle. Re regenerates herself. She's amazing. Um, but, you know, because she has her memoir out called Inside Out, which is so Scorpio. And it's, of course, it's like Gone with the Wind in terms, it's like Vivian Lee or something, you know, where it's like any tragedy, the deaths and the, you know, I mean, the amount of tragedy is endless. Wow. Starting from her childhood, you know, it's like all the Scorpio themes, like the mother trying to commit suicide, rape. I, uh, I, wow. I didn't you know, realize yeah, that. These are all the Scorpio themes, though. Yeah. I mean, I don't, and I'm not trying to lighten them. I'm just so it's almost like a curated shadow. 
a curated shadow. That's a good point. Interesting, huh? Interesting. Although yeah. I think it's authentic with her. I mean, maybe it's curated in the sense that now they're marketing it. Oh, well, so yeah, in, in that sense. Yeah, it's a, it's, right now. wow, yeah. That's intense, yeah. So, well, curated is maybe not the right word, but it's almost like that, it's almost like the anti-persona in the sense that it's like, yeah, let's, let's all this bright, shiny stuff that you're familiar with, let's balance that with all the crap that I had to go through to get, right? That's the point, yes, exactly. And that is the other kind of trend now is to be like, that is also curated. Like the way people, it's sad that people have, learn to use this in marketing like let me tell you my story of like darkness because then you'll relate to me and then you will follow me ah interesting it okay this in marketing. So that's a thing now it's been a thing for years but that's so there a, is okay. that there is that i was just thinking in terms of a curated interesting shadow. so maybe it is kind of a curated shadow kind of thing i mean it is her story i'm sure but and yeah. i think she did it more because she needed to i mean of course certainly put her back on the map too can't say there's not something right. but no but i think you know you can see like the real um strength and integrity in her when she talks about it you know it's it feels authentic it feels like a scorpio who has been to hell and back you know yeah. Yeah. she's not trying to dramatize or have his yeah. version of her obviously life. the positive there is that people can you know relate and they can feel like wow you know if she went through all that then you know whatever i'm going through is you know just you know it's just yeah. another, you know, thing that everybody has their cross to bear, as they say, right? Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think we, you know, because I think this is a really good point. I'm so glad you're bringing this up because I think overemphasizing all the shiny stuff, like you say, the persona, like, let's look good. Let's, um, you know, let's put filters and Photoshop everything to the point where nobody even looks real and let's you know and then even all the like plastic surgery stuff that goes on i mean there's just so much of like taking the trying to take reality out of the equation um that the shadow gets bigger and bigger around that so it is going to come in when it comes in it's like whoa you find out actually this was all look at all the stuff that was going on mm -hmm. behind the scenes yeah and look at all the pain like this person you thought Oh wow, this person had it all. Like that that we hear that all the time. Like, oh, you thought this person had it all, and you find out the tragedy behind the supposed. So it's always suspect when you see anyone, it's like, oh, they're living the perfect life. It's like, well, what's going on inside? So I like that she calls her book inside out because it's really what's yeah. going on inside. And I yeah. love the again the synchronicity that I don't know if she did this on purpose, but the fact that her book came out right as Mercury's going into Scorpio. Venus is in Scorpio. She's the sun, Venus, Mercury, and Scorpio person. No kidding. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah, it would be it would be really fascinating to look at the astrology of the, the book release and all that vis-a-vis -vis her chart. I love doing that stuff. You know, that's but you know, <laughs> I'll have to check that out now. Thought, like I was like, oh, she's really in the zeitgeist. Like she's really like it's it makes sense that she would be the number one right now. And I love when it's yep. so back like that in the retrograde, like she's coming back, like her book is going to come back. It's probably going to just keep doing better. Interesting. Yeah. Better. And there is a lot, one thing I don't know if a lot of people realize, you know, Mercury, Venus are one of the most frequent conjunctions because they're two of the fastest and they kind of flip back and forth on each either side of the sun. But they also do this thing that they're doing now where they kind of zoom along together in the Zodiac for quite a while. They've been together since just after the new moon in late August. And they've been kind of zooming along maybe 10 degrees or so apart. So not really what you think of as a conjunction, and yet they're right there going together. And, they're, and then eventually Venus is going to catch Mercury around Halloween, right before Halloween. In fact, um, there's a conjunction, I wrote it down, there's a conjunction of a young crescent moon, mm. Venus and Mercury, all in the western sky on October 28th and 29th. Mm. Um, so I think this, what you're saying about um, her being in the, like the fact that it's this long running conjunction would, would be more energy to 
keep a book like at the top of the charts for like a while, right? Because they're right there together and they're just, it's this sustained energy, you mm -hmm. know? So there's this sustained energy between Venus and Mercury and Scorpio that's going on that you can use to really, like you said, like um, to, to turn things inside out and to really process that. Um, one thing that you mentioned when I was asking you about things that you thought were important for this Mercury retrograde is that, for instance, processing last year's Venus retrograde, mm -hmm. which was in Scorpio, mm -hmm. right? So about a year ago, this time, yep. we had Venus retrograde in Scorpio. And so the reverberations of that are still playing out in various ways. And I was thinking to myself when I made that note, I was like, oh my God, I should totally do project 40 with you because there's like a million things that, that I could process uh, yeah, from that. Please, please from that you, time. Yeah. I brought you in the rebirth. Um, well, the and, and then I thought, holy shit, I'm way too busy. I could never pull that off. <laughs> I was like, Damn can, it. Half hour a day. I always say all you need is a half hour a day. Half hour a day. Okay. All right. You well, can always, you can always go back to it, any parts of it, but a half hour a day, you can still have the container. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll have to think about that. You don't have more. to write it. You would just be participating. You don't have to write every day. Okay. All right. You need to be receiving. So. Yeah. See, I, I'm just like, I, I'm, I have a hard time. Like I'm kind of all or nothing with stuff like that. I either want to be like oh, completely in it. Oh yeah. I'm, You'll be in I feel it. like I'm, I feel like I'm cheating on, you know, oh. cheating on it. If I'm not like, you know, just a hundred percent, you know what I'm saying? I have to say that what's really been interesting to me is that this is probably the most, even if people wouldn't admit it, I think, I'm not saying that this is your case, um, but people really have a strong resistance to this topic because nobody, it's, it's the most pervasive emotion people don't want to talk, don't want to admit that they have it. It's like the one envy. emotion that nobody has, envy. I'm not envious, <laughs> I'm not jealous. People don't realize, I would say this is the most important shadow to tackle. Because I yeah. think it's so many other shadows. The more I get into this, I'm like, oh, this is such important work. Well, they call it the green, the green monster. You know, it's like, oh, it's so, come on. I mean, as soon as you find out, as soon as you find out that, um, oh, this, you know, object relations, man, it's like so early. It's so basic, like, oh, this is my toy and that's your toy. And, you know, like, oh, well, I like yours better than mine or, you know, you got a Christmas present, you got a better Christmas present than me, or, or, I mean, come on, man, it's so, like, there, it's impossible not to have envy, a lot it's of it, it's, it's like, all, it's all the time, or we wouldn't have social media, exactly, like, we wouldn't have things, like, well, the way it's set up now, we wouldn't have followers and like buttons if, if we didn't feed on this energy, that's what exactly. I mean, exactly, like, yeah, and if we could get to the bottom of it, we might be able to transform and have a different way of creating this i i don't agree with the the likes and the followers i don't think it's healthy psychologically i think it keeps us stuck in like adolescence yeah there's like, something the about like um i i i enjoy liking other people's stuff and like as a as a as a token of my support for them yeah. um and you know i enjoy commenting more and just saying congratulations or whatever um, right. but this idea that you have to have a certain number, that there's a quota of followers before you're somebody, it's like, eh, like, I don't, you know, I don't and know. It sets everything up as manipulation. So the problem is, I mean, it can, you know, I mean, it's really like, it just sets up society to be in this mode of like, it sets up envy is what I'm, this is my. Yeah. Opinion. And it's kind of a quantity <laughs> over quality deal too, then, isn't it? Well, think about it. Like it's, I mean, even the way these, I've been really fascinated my Scorpio brain, Mercury and Scorpio brain, how, you know, I, I never will invest full out in watching any of these like marketing people, but I, they always stream through. I'm sure you can't avoid it. Like if you're on any kind of social media, you're going to see those like flash ads. And I'm always fascinated that even the two seconds that this thing will cross my path, I can tell that the whole motivation behind whatever they're selling is to say, look, if you can make other people want your life, basically, that's envy. Like, what about being in your own life? It's like, make people oh, think that you're God, having I never thought of it that life. way. Make people think you're living the most amazing life. They'll want your life. And anyway, this, this is the, but I'm more interested even in like maybe going deeper into 
the reason I think it's so important beyond that, that that's just show that's the symptom, right? To me, the, the wound or the, the sickness around it is that we don't realize how much energy is just around in the atmosphere. Think about every time, everyone, it doesn't matter how evolved you are. I have to fight it in myself. I'm not beyond this. I'm not feeling like, oh yeah, I have no envy. Like I have to like, I feel like in my spiritual practices, it's been the hardest thing for me as a toxic kind of energy that anytime I catch that feeling of like, I hear about something in my first response, no matter who it is, isn't to be like, oh, like just only pure celebration. Of course, like the people closest to you feel that most of the time, sometimes not even if you feel like they have something you want, you might still feel a little like you still feel it in your body somewhere. Right. Yeah. 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 And it's hard to admit you don't, nobody wants to admit it. And everybody was, is always going to put on this face like, oh, I'm just purely <laughs> ecstatic and excited for you. But if there's any part of you that wants a little bit of what they're about to receive, or you feel like it's taking something from you, like you said, like the child, like the toy. What, what about like if you, when you start yeah. comparing yourself to other people, that's, that's related too, that's right? Isn't that really envy? Aren't that's, you that's really it. like, aren't you basically like, even if you're going, oh, like so you see somebody like accomplish something, you go, oh gosh, like I, you know, I feel small compared to that. It's, it's still like a, I don't know, is there reverse envy or what, what do you call it? Because you're, yeah. you're comparing yourself to them and belittling yourself in, in yeah. almost as a way to like, guard against the envy or something I don't know but it seems like there's this constant comparison of you know to other people that goes on and I think to myself man like that cannot be healthy that cannot be good for you to be constantly comparing yourself to other people oh we live in a compare despair society again this is what social media breeds on absolutely wait what was that compared to compare despair I call it compared, compared despair. to that, I don't call it that. That's, I think it's like a 12 step thing I heard along the way. What's, what does that mean? Compare to spare. I've heard people drop it. Compare to spare, like you're not supposed to compare because it leads to despair. Oh, compare to spare. Got it. Yes. Compare to spare. Or my art teacher used to say comparison is death. He said, as an artist, don't compare. It's death. The minute you start comparing, we read this whole essay, Comparison is Death. I'll never forget it. Wow. That's, I love that. Wow. Yeah. Because what happens is, your own instinctive um, impulses towards your authentic creativity, they get stifled. The energy gets directed towards this comparison, whereas you, your, your path is, there is no comparison, right? I mean, if you're really, what Joseph Campbell said, if you're on, you know, a path, it's not yours because <laughs> right. your, your path is going to be like, you know, nobody's no. been there you know what i'm saying and so yeah as soon as you start comparing i see that totally it's death because you've you've cut off the that creative impulse to go where only you can go you know right. yeah 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 so i think that that i don't know exactly what the but i think that has to do with envy i think it's a kind of envy envy is powerful that's what i'm realizing the more it's so scorpio in this sense that the more i dive into it I've been, I've been meditating on it since I had the idea to do this theme because I've been thinking about the rebirth for many months. So I, maybe around the time that the Mercury Venus started traveling together, I would say probably around the end of August, I really started to meditate on envy as a theme because of course my all or nothing self, I'm like, I want this to be the most, like this P40 to be everything, you know, <laughs> everything like that I've ever experienced in my life up to this point that I could possibly share, you know, everything Scorpio, <laughs> and my essence, like I'm going to pour into this project really. So I'm like, see, that's what I'm talking about. Like, see, if I, if I come in and participate, I want to be there. I'm, I'm like all in, you know, <laughs> Yeah, that's a total Aries uh, it Scorpio is. thing. Yeah. That's how I feel. Like I don't sleep at night because I'm constantly like this. I've been listening. I can't, I keep finding new things I want to listen and meditate and think about. And it's so funny. There's not a lot of good writing on envy. I was surprised. I was really trying to find some sources of, you know, just to like find different approaches to it than what I know through my work. And um, it's funny. The only ways I can seem to find any writing, it's through very Christian lens. Really? That's very judgment. Yeah. There's not a lot of writing on it. And the, the books that I found are really like, yeah, because 
nobody wants to touch it except for like people that are like, they want to call it a sin, envy, the sin, you know, jealousy and envy, the sin. So, but I, I was like, well, let me hear what they have to say because I want to know that's very Mercury, right? That's a healthy Mercury to be like, well, let's hear, I want to hear all yeah, thoughts. I, mean, yeah, I know all right? thoughts. Like, I want to know. Yeah, I really, because I'll learn something from it. And I did. And it was, it's, it's especially great to study someone that thinks so differently than you. Well, isn't it basically like, not necessarily the original sin, but because that, you know, I'm not going to go there, but <laughs> it's one of the early sins because basically you had Cain and Abel. Exactly. And Cain, ha Cain was associated with like pastoralism and he had, wait, let me see if I'm getting this right. Was it, one of them was like a farmer and one of them um, was like a, a shepherd. Yeah. And one of them gave a sacrifice of grain and one gave a sacrifice of animal. And one of, I can't remember which one was which, but one of the sacrifices was seen to be more favorable in the eyes of God. <laughs> and it, and, and, the, the and, they, and they, they got jealous. The brother got jealous and killed his brother out of envy. This is the, this is the original. That's right. This is the metaphor. Thank you. That's definitely one. I've been thinking about that one you know For and sure, it's like, like that way like even around you know my spiritual teacher it's so funny where he when we spend time around my spiritual teacher online india or even when she comes here people laugh because you know here you're supposed to be focusing on your inner world and self-sacrifice and and everybody's jockeying to get closer to her right it, everyone's jealous like she hugged that one longer <laughs> she liked that oh one God. she didn't look at me you know that's part of the process i mean hopefully oh you don't my get it is that, that, that just go back to like you know the two brothers and their sacrifices be one being more acceptable than the other isn't that basically just like envy uh, uh, sibling rivalry like you know your parents it is uh, you know maybe had a, a different relationship with your sibling than you did and you know you feel like you miss something or you you know I mean, it's just, yeah. it's really basic stuff. Yeah. And, you know, growing up as an only child, I remember I was thinking about this because I was like, oh, I didn't really have sibling rivalry because I didn't have any siblings, but I would play it out with my best friends, my girlfriends. I remember I had one girlfriend who was a cancer and we used to love to play video games and go bowling together. Like those were kind of our two things. And both of us, whoever would win one of those things, we wouldn't, the other one would get so upset when talk to the other one for like a week. Oh like we were such, both of us were such bad losers. I was a bad loser. I was definitely one of those kids, like when you're playing whatever board game, anything would throw a fit if I lost. Like I was a terrible loser. <laughs> Never like would lose gracefully. And then I had a friend that was the same. So I learned from that, you know, from that dynamic that that's kind of that, but I say that because when we're kids, like we don't, before the shadow develops, we think it's okay to act out on that. And then you learn like, oh, that's shameful. Like you can't, you know, show that you're so jealous and upset that the other person won or they got the right, prize or right. got the thing or they, you know, whatever, they got the thing you didn't get. You learn to like hide that, put on a face of like, great, and inside you're burning, you know? <laughs> and so it's like, you know, I remember my guru saying like, it's a sickness if people, uh, when you delight in somebody else's misfortune, that's like the most extreme, right? Like, like yeah. your enemy, even if it's your enemy and you're like, Ooh, you know, right. like, so even, even if it's the person you want to see go down, it's still like, if you, if in spirituality, we're trying to come into a oneness, we're all one and we don't want anyone to go down. Right. But it's so much work to get there is my point. I mean, I'm not saying I'm there. I'm not saying, yeah. Yeah. And what, what, what the bringing the darkness to the light does is just show how much of it is in there, like, and how much of it just kind of it's like this low level. That's what I feel. It's not like we're all walking around with this like raging envy, hopefully, but it's like this low level kind of like when people are going through the feeds that they're probably like, Oh, she, you know what I mean? Like even like, Oh, well, why she, Ooh, she thinks she's all that, you know? Or right. <laughs> you know, right. See, like, there you go. Oh, she, he thinks she's all that, or she thinks she's all that, that right there. And it, it's like, yeah, yeah. it's like it's, <laughs> it's sort of low level, but it's kind of pervasive or, you know, you think, um, you know, oh, you know, bastard got, you know, blah, 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 which, yeah. which I wanted, you know, but then it's why did like, they get that position or why did they get that? Yeah. Position? Or, you know, whatever. So it, and to me, 
right away, I think that something that's linked, which is interesting because the Taurus Scorpio polarity, right? That comes from scarcity thinking. That comes from poverty consciousness. There's yeah. not enough to go around. Oh, they got that thing. Now I won't be able to get it. So you'll get something else. You'll yes. get what's yours. You don't want what's theirs. You want what's yours. That's you know? the thing. And I have to, I try to remind myself of that, you know, when I'm having those thoughts. It's like, yeah, they got a thing. It's their thing. Be happy for them. Your thing is something else. That's right. There's, there's way more than enough to go around. And you're, you're not wanting, really, look at your life. Like, you've got everything a reasonable person could expect to have. You know what I'm saying? That's right. And we can also use it in another level, which I think is the, the trans, transformational, uh, maybe, other side of Taurus, we could say, like, the creative is to see the Scorpio-Taurus polarity, to see the desire. Like, to, as soon as you feel that tinge of jealousy or envy or like, like, oh, somebody has something, they're, they're going to do better than me. They're going to go further than me. I'm not, often it's showing, okay, maybe you don't feel like you're living up to your potential. Right. Maybe. <laughs> you know, you could try harder. Maybe you haven't acknowledged a certain desire you have, or you haven't allowed yourself or given yourself permission to really pursue that. So use that information instead of staying in that toxic energy, transmute it and be like, let me get in touch with my desire. And then you can use the positive side of Mars, right? which is, all right, I'm going to be determined and I'm going to go after yeah. my version of that. If you, if we're living at our full potential or we know we're at least, you know, taking that Mars energy and driving it toward our own path, our own goal at our, you know, living at our highest, um, what we know we're, we're going to be so of. busy, you know, climbing our own mountain. We're not going to have time right. to like, you know, waste well, well, it won't have that being... opening because right. You're yeah. not, we, that often happens. I know I've noticed for myself, like when I feel that it's often an indication of like, Oh, it's because like, I'll, I notice myself getting jealous, like when people's all these amazing books come out, you know, that always gets me. And I'm like, <gasps> I feel that. And then I'm like, no, it's because you still haven't written your book. You still haven't published your book. Like get yeah. on it. Yeah. So I try to like, as soon as I feel that, I just go, don't, cause you're going to, don't go down. Just yeah. Because, that, right, that because yeah, because once you've published your book, what's going to happen is you're going to go, Oh, I remember what that felt like. Right. See, you've now you've got a replacement rather than, Oh, I want what they, you go, oh, I remember what it felt like to be, you know, shouting that's from right. the rooftop when I got, you know, and it, that's why, you know, when people, when I see people, when you see people doing something you've done, there's not as much of a, because you've been there, done that, it's easy to be happy for them. Oh, exactly. I remember when I was, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's really exactly. interesting. I like that. To get to work, get your thing done, and then you then you won't be jealous anymore, right? Because you'll be, you, you will have already done that. That's right. Or like another example I, I've noticed with some of my clients that I work with, you know, if they are going through their Saturn return, let's say, and it feels like everyone in front of them is their careers are going way like zooming so far past, you know, that what they're, what they're feeling like their six, their success level is right now, or all their friends are getting married and having babies. And they're like, I haven't even found my partner, things like that. That's yeah. very common during the Saturn return to get into that kind of terror, jealousy feeling of like, <gasps> when, when is it going to happen? What if it doesn't happen for me? So what I always try to help my clients connect to, which I found is really a powerful healing medicine is to, it's not like you fake the happiness, like, okay, just pretend you're happy for that person. But if you can get into the energy of that and feel it, then you're with them instead of it being like this thing that's eluding you and you're never going to have it. Like you want to go closer to that energy. Right. And I always say that if it's, showing up things that you want are showing up really close to you that energy is trying to come closer to you right exactly and we want yeah. to connect to the desire not the lack i think that's a great point like connect exactly to the yeah to connect to the desire because then it becomes like a magnet that's pulling you instead of a magnet that's so you like it's like a <laughs> magnet you know when you push the magnets at the wrong end they go you know they push apart but if you just flip the magnet around it's like shoot it comes right together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> I love it. I feel like we're cracking like the, you know, the Scorpio Mars code here. <laughs> like how to do Scorpio, how to get out of the, the lower realm of Scorpio and into the eagle, you know? Yeah, no, that's definitely, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. The, and you know where that comes from? It's called uh, Peron Antella, uh, Perans, 
when Scorpio is rising, the constellation of the eagle rises to the north. So, so the eagle is literally the higher vibration of Scorpio in the sense that they rise together and the eagle is in the higher part of the sky in the north as they go around um, the sky. Yeah. Oh, I never knew that. Yeah, yeah, Aquila, yeah. That's so, cool. so yeah, I, I really enjoy the eagle as the higher side, um, as the higher side of that. And, and I was thinking about that too, like, you know, some of the higher side, when you get out of the envy, when you get out of the disappointment or the, um, or the feelings that come from loss and some, you know, the, uh, another thing that you mentioned, um, loss of words. Yes. I mean, I remember I had that experience only once in my life, really, um, powerfully where I literally, I had nothing to say. Mm -hmm. And it was after I experienced the loss of a loved one and I was going through and I just, I had nothing to say to anybody. Mm -hmm. And I spent like a while just being with that. And, um, and I realized like after I came out of that, um, there was a power and a confidence of, of having been through that. It's like that which doesn't kill you makes you stronger, I guess. Because even though it was a very hard experience to go through and really bewildering, actually, because I was thinking to myself, you know, is there something wrong for me? I know I should be saying something here at this point in the conversation. I just literally have nothing to say. Um, mm -hmm. But there, there's a power and a confidence. And indeed, here's an interesting thing that I think is a high side. I want to run this by you and see, see what you think. Faith. Faith, I think, is the high side of Scorpio. I think the faith of Sagittarius, that Sagittarius optimism and all that, it comes out of the trials of the, of Scorpio. Absolutely. When you've been through it, and you know you've been through it, and you came out the other side, there's a tremendous faith yes. that comes from that. Oh yeah. You no. Know? I the you can't you everyone has to have gone have gone through their own dark night of the soul to really have that. I always say to have the power to preach. It's like, you really don't, you can feel somebody doesn't really have the power to preach in that kind of Sagittarius <laughs> mode unless they've been to hell and back. Right. Otherwise exactly. you just feel fluff. Right. <laughs> Not interesting. Not yeah, and there's, a, there's a feeling you can connect with people. There's an authenticity when you know somebody's been there, right? Yeah. There's a power in that preaching because you can feel it in their words that it's true that it's not just a put on, right? That they've been there and they know what they're talking about, right? And that faith that's in their voice, it's a vibration. Yes, and it's it, in the and voice. It, and it transmits, you know, that, yeah, yeah. So that's an interesting um, positive. I wanna, I wanna um, just uh, before, before I forget, I want to remind people that there's a couple other things that you're involved in you're doing a retreat in Sedona in November. Yes, the Vortex Diaries. Yes, November 17th through 21st. At the tail end of the Scorpio. So that, I wanted to have a retreat where we could do the energy medicine version of healing, on the, bringing in the physical. Because I always feel, now first of all, Sedona to me is the Red Rocks. That's Mars territory. Right. That is Mars. I love Sedona. Mm. And if there's a place to heal and change your frequency after conjuring in all of this darkness, bringing it to the light, we need a place then where we can really rebalance. And, um, nice. and I just think it'll be a, a perfect time of year to do a retreat before this big, I mean, it's another conversation I want to open necessarily, but the whole Saturn Pluto. Yes. Alchemical marriage in January. I think we're all preparing for that between now and the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Mercury's helping us by going. I was saying Mercury in retrograde. Mercury in. See, I said I was going to say that. Mercury retrograde in Scorpio. Make, is making three sextiles to Saturn, three sextiles to Pluto. There you go. And don't you think? I mean, I, yeah. I really love Mercury that he's. It. You know, if we're gonna really get in the right mental space for this conjunction this alchemical marriage of Saturn and Pluto in January, 2020, who's going to do the job? Scorpio. Who's yeah. going to really take us into those dark territories? We got it. Cause you know, that's some shadow work right there. 
Yeah, yeah. No one can avoid the shadow work for the next two months. If if people take nothing else from this podcast, please do your shadow yeah, work. Yeah, and you even like even if it's specific. yeah, even if it's just you know, um, you know, on your own, you know, uh, in your own private space, journaling or meditating or you know what have you. Um, well, they must do Project Forty. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 uh, honestly yeah i mean to me that's definitely one of the best ways to do it and then in december you're doing an authentic movement retreat december 13th through 15th in san fran yes i love those i did one um at the end of i just did one in um august and uh it was it, i love doing retreats in my own hometown too right <laughs> we'll come here because there's it's a, like great having a bunch of guests here. Yeah. Yeah, but I love authentic movement as another modality for healing. And um, actually, it's funny. I was telling you, like, I realized when I was like, work on your books. And that's the next book I'm working on is about the movement practices because I feel it's really the integration of everything that nice. all even all the Project Forty work I do. In the end, if it's not embodied, that's why I'm doing the retreat and both retreats actually is because all the deep inner work has to be embodied at the end of the day. Nice. You so know. it's about bringing it into the body and expressing it through movement so that it becomes sort of like muscle memory or something. So that's not just oh. in your head or. So, yeah, so it actually can work its way down through the chakras, through the subtle nice. body, through, you know, so that it becomes a part of our, our of soma like a yeah. awareness because otherwise i mean the psyche is part of it and definitely the unconscious already yeah. in the body but to make it to really what i've noticed in all the deep work i've done the most mystical experiences i've had and the most powerful levels of awakening i've had are and i, I can't say that again like the mercury level is the processing that prepares you for that you know the meditations that prepare you for that but Maybe this is Uranus and Taurus speaking now, but I really feel that the body piece, you know, I think it's the comp, you know, like Taurus being the complement to Scorpio. Yes, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. We have to embody the, that deeper work. Yeah, I, you know, I, it just occurred to me that uh, maybe that's one of the reasons why I so treasure and enjoy my time out in the sky because, you know, I have to put on a backpack and haul this heavy you know, gear up, you know, and I'm hiking up there and I'm, you know, and I'm out in the weather, you know, with the wind and, and battling the elements and really mm -hmm. that, that experience of a small being standing on the ground, looking up at this vast array of lights. I mean, to me, that's the embodiment of being an astrologer, you know? Oh, yes. So yes. I think maybe that's my sort of uh, authentic movement version of, of what you that's do. That's definitely embodiment. And yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. I love that. Right on. Well, unfortunately, I have to go. Doggone it. Time goes by so fast talking. Well, I'll have you on my podcast. We can continue. All right. Sounds, sounds good. And, you know, Mercury does things three times okay. during these passages. So we'll, so we'll, we'll have definitely to have, to, we'll have to figure out how to honor that part of it. And I would love that. And have a repeat performance. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shereen, for being here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And everybody check out her at ShereenVismaya.com. Until next time, thanks for listening and bright blessings of Mercury and Venus and Scorpio. Bye. Awesome. Oh, that was so good.